Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Crosspoint Online. As you're watching this service, we want to encourage you to comment below and connect with us as a church. We also want to give you guys the chance to connect with us on all of our social media platforms, or you can click the Next Steps link in the description. We also want you guys to partner with us financially, and you can do so by texting the word GIVE to the number 903 329-2828. Or you can do so by going to our website, crosspointfellowshipchurch.com and hit the Give tab. Again, we are so excited that you decided to join us today. Let's worship together. Morning, church. My name is Pastor Manny, and it truly is a privilege and honor to share the greatest news of all, the gospel message of Jesus Christ, the fact that he died for our sins, past, present, and future, and because of that sacrifice, we are made new, we are made whole, we are made complete. And I understand that you'll be watching service today online, on social media platforms, on a smart TV or some Roku television, and it may not seem the same. But I want to encourage you to, to turn the volume up. I want to encourage you to put away distractions. I want to encourage you to bring the family into the living room and spend some time in church. You see, a building is just that. It's just a building. But when Jesus refers to the church, when the word of God refers to the church, they're not talking about an address. They are talking about the fellowship of believers. And when two or three of us are gathered, the Spirit of the Lord is present. And so I want to encourage you to welcome God's presence into your living room, onto your smartphone, into your car, wherever you might be watching or listening. Welcome to the church. We've been in the middle of a sermon series entitled Battles and Beats, where we've been looking at some of our favorite worship songs, along with the scriptures and the stories that help to inspire those songs. My question, church, is what are you listening to today? What songs are we playing every single day? If we ask Alexa or, or Siri to let us know what songs or albums we've been playing the most over the last two months, three months, four months, what would it tell us? You see, music has the power to mold our worldview, the way we look at people, the way we look at relationships, the way we look at love. See, I remember a, a comedian one time doing stand-up comedy said that there was gonna be a new application for your phone to gauge whether or not you're leading into clinical depression. And the way that they, he said that they would be able to gauge it is by how many hours you spend listening to any song created, written, and sang by Adele. I mean, have you heard some of those songs? Golly, I'm talking about break out the ice cream, start a emotional eating. 
And it's just a joke, clearly. But music does have the power to impact the way that we view things. What we're listening to matters. What's been playing in our cars, church? What do we have playing in our earbuds? What do we have playing in our ear pods? What, what are we listening to? You see, it matters. You see, the Eight Mile soundtrack is, isn't going to make weed eating that much more enjoyable. At the end of the day, it's still weed eating. And I don't know about you, but everyone stay fighting in 2020. Everyone stay angry. Honestly, I think it started with the terrible music of the 90s and it just continued to progress. I know, I know. A lot of fighting and bickering and angering has been, and, and, and fighting has been happening for years upon years. But I truly feel like it's been progressively worse from the, the 90s to the 2000s to the 2010s and now, just hold on, 2020 is like, hold up, hold my drink real quick. Let me show you what real problems look like. Let me show you what real struggles look like. Let me show you what, 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 what the world can look like if I put my hands to work. Feels like everyone's always fighting. Everyone's always angry. What happened to the good old days in the, in the 80s when you walk up into a house party or you, you walk up into a club and you might see somebody that, that you're not too happy with and they look at you and you look at them and some music starts to play and you're just like, And then they look at you like. And then they back to you. And you're like, hold on. And they look at you like, oh no, you did it. Yeah, yeah, could you imagine that? I mean, people literally handle their problems through a dance cipher. Let some MJ come on and people get ready to start moving around. They wasn't out there shooting the fair ones or going back to the car to go grab something. They would literally challenge the other person and go, okay, what do you got? And if you took a loss that day, if you took a L that day, what it meant is you go back down into the basement. No, we ain't have many of those in Texas. And you start working on your game, you start working on your robot, you start working on some of your moves, and when you come back the next week, oh, it's, it's on, boy. It's on like Donkey Kong. It is on. Wait a minute, that's the guy that made me look foolish last week, so I got something for him. It kind of makes you wonder what it would look like in the wild, wild west if they just had really good music. Some of those draws would probably look a lot different. There'd probably be a lot more people with rhythm and a lot less people being gunned down over something out front of a saloon. What we're listening to matters. And today we'll be diving into the powerful hymn called Jesus Paid It All. The song was written in 1865 by Elvina Hall. The song was written on a Sunday while she was sitting in the choir loft. While the pastor was praying long, she said. Ain't that funny? Pastors always seem to be praying long. Even back in 1865, not much has changed. Elvina's mind turned to our needs for salvation and the price Jesus paid for it. You see, words be, began to form themselves, she said. She had to get them down, but she had no paper. So she started scribbling on the flyleaf of her hymn book, which back in 1865 potentially could have led to her crucifixion. She handed it to her pastor, who combined it with a poem the organist just gave him recently, and that formed what we now know today as the great hymn, Jesus Paid It All. The song starts off by saying, I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. You see, Matthew 26, 41 inspires that. It says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. 
The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's what Jesus told the disciples in the garden the night that Judas would betray him. He knew that the, the time was near, that he would soon be brutally bitten. He would be ridiculed and, and tortured. He wasn't cowboying up. He wasn't amping up his followers to fight. He wasn't handing out baseball bats or, or brass knuckles. He went with the greatest weapon that the Lord has given us as saints, prayer. One of the most valuable resources the Lord has given to his people, and yet one of the most underutilized. It's definitely something that, as Christians, that we can all admit that we can absolutely do more of. Not just when, when things get really bad or when we hit rock bottom, but at all times. In all circumstances, we can absolutely become people of prayer. The song continues, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Isaiah 118 says, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though you are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Everything, church, everything, everything, everything in the Bible is about Jesus Christ. Even the writing in the Old Testament is about or is leading up to our Messiah, Jesus Christ. You see, the prophet Isaiah was speaking about the, the one who would be sent into this world who would be born a, a, of a virgin and, and live a life without sin to take on the sins of the entire world. Your sins and my sins and everyone listening to this, your sins as well, so that we would not be found guilty. The song continues, For, for nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20. For you know that it was not with the perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world but was revealed in these last times for your sake, for your sake, for my sake. You see, Miss Elvina was overwhelmed with the thoughts of her Savior King and what he went through on her behalf the day that she wrote this song. She understood, just like Peter, that, that, gr that the grace of God is given to us through the faith in his son, Jesus Christ. There's no other way. It doesn't matter how much money we have. It doesn't matter how much we have in savings. It doesn't matter how much we don't have in savings or how much money we don't have. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in or what neighborhood you come from. It doesn't matter your last name or, or where you grew up, who your parents were, what kind of street credibility your last name brings to the table. It's not about works. It's not by works. It's not by how good of a person you are. It's not by how many free cars you give away or how many nonprofits you help support. You see, you cannot earn your way in. It's a free gift. It's free. But it wasn't cheap. It came with a price. You see, it took a, a spotless, sinless Jesus to die so that we could live. Without that sacrifice, there is no salvation for us. And now complete in him, my robe, his righteousness, close sheltered neath his side, I am divinely blessed. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots 
and melt the heart of stone. Matthew 8, 2 and 3. A man with leprosy came and, and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and, and touched the man and he said, I am willing. He said, be clean immediately. He was cleansed of his leprosy. Cleansed of his leprosy. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his hair. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 you Rabbi, cannot, Rabbi, it's disease, you can't. Please. Please. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Only if you want to, I submit to you. My sister, she was a servant at the wedding. She told me what you could do. I know you can heal me if you are willing. I am willing. <laughs> Be cleansed. Thank you. <laughs> you see, lepers were the outcasts of society. They were treated like animals. They weren't allowed to be part of any society or community outside of running with some of the other lepers. This wasn't something that was based on what they did or, or on past sins or decisions they made. This was a disease, an infectious bacteria that could be spread damaging nerves, the respiratory tract, damaging eyes, damaging skin. You see, you would have to wear black clothes and you would have to announce whenever you were around other people for them to be careful because you are a leper. Could you imagine living like that? Having to announce in, in a crowd, having to announce in front of people Hey, step away, move away, be careful, I'm coming through. I have an infectious disease. Don't stand close to me. Don't, don't hug me, don't shake my hand, don't, don't be a part of community with me, don't, don't offer me God's love, his mercy, his grace, because I have an infectious disease. Jesus came for everyone. Jesus came for that leper. Jesus went and not only came for the leper, but he touched the leper. He put hands on the leper when no one else would even come near that person. Jesus came for everyone. He came for those deemed unlovable, those the, the rest of the world detest, those societal outcast. But he also came for everyone else too. He also came for you. He came for me. Those who think they're, they're genuinely good people, those who think they, they don't need saving, those who don't quite understand that the only way is through him, he came for them too. He came for all of us. Jesus came for all of us. The song continues. When from my dying bed... My ransom's show shall rise. Jesus died my soul to save, shall rend the vaulted skies. 
And when before the throne I stand in him complete, I'll lay my trophies down, all down at Jesus' feet. I don't know if you know this, but we are all sinners. We all fall short. We all miss the mark. You see, being a good person by our standards doesn't secure your eternity in heaven. The only way into eternity with God is through the one that paid it all. It's through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's through making him Lord and Savior of your life. You see, when you make that decision, his spirit now takes residence inside of you making you a new creation, making you a new creation in Christ Jesus. God wants you to know that he loves you. God wants you to know that he's crazy about you. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, I want to lead you in that very simple prayer. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. And I know that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. I know that he not only died, but he resurrected for me, and he paid for my sin debt in full. Because of that, I am a new creation, and Lord, help me to chase after you every day of my life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms and reach out to us. If you want to be a part of our movement and what God is doing through Crosspoint, you can give through our website or through our new text to tithe service. It's simple. Just text the word GIVE to 903-329-2828 and it will walk you through the rest of the steps.